Good Monday evening, everyone. It's time for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Didn't do one at the end of the week last week with the quiet weather and heading into the 4th. But now we're back uh, fully in the swing of things. And uh, boy, some of us have uh, gotten lucky today. Some of us not so lucky in the rain department anyway. Uh, check out some of these ra uh, Doppler radar estimated rainfall totals. Uh, from Mahoning County up into Trumbull County, uh, up to two and a half, maybe even three inches in some places. Now, there's only a couple of rain gauges in here. I'll show you those in just a second. But the, the radar is estimating some pretty hefty totals. Uh, Craig Beach heading up towards Newton Falls and just west of Lordstown. And then once you go kind of east of, of Niles, not much at all today in Hubbard or West Middlesex or Hermitage, uh, Vienna. Uh, heading over towards Poland, there's been some light rain, but uh, it's definitely been heavier in the western part of our viewing area. There was another bullseye today out in far eastern Lawrence and far eastern parts of Mercer County. Somebody might have gotten an inch around Grove City. Uh, so kind of two bullseyes with the rain totals today. Now as far as the rain gauges go, uh, here on the Weather Underground page, uh, we can look at some of these gauges. And there's one right here in northwest Warren, uh, kind of between Levittsburg and Warren. That registered 2.3 inches today. Now that's the only rain gauge that's kind of in that hot zone from uh, Warren on south. This Newton Falls uh, gauge 0.92. Then you head down towards Austin Town and tenth of an inch. Uh, that did have about uh, a little short of half an inch just north of uh, the Mill Creek uh, Golf Course in uh, in the Boardman area. But uh, you know, it just depends on where you live today. Another gauge here in Boardman, only a few hundredths of an inch. So it was one of those days, real hit or miss stuff. It just sort of depended on where you were in the grand scheme of things. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the current radar because most of you will watch this after, but notice the decrease in activity on this loop over the last couple of hours. The activity has definitely been shrinking. Uh, the thunder and lightning is pretty much non-existent at this point, so if your evening plans got washed out, that's, that's a shame. <laughs> but uh, uh, if uh, you want to get outside here before sunset this evening, aside from a little rain, you should be in pretty good shape. Well, why the weather like this today? Here's a quick look at the upper levels, and uh, we can blame an upper level low pressure system. Used to have a closed contour on this, now it's just kind of an open wave in through here, and this is just a trough in the jet stream. We're actually looking a little below jet stream level here, about uh, 18,000 feet up. But uh, you get the idea, and this uh, allow the atmosphere to get unstable today and produce the showers and the thunderstorms. Uh, and as we lose the heating of the day, the most instability, these are fading away. And another trough uh, approaching from the north and west. This is associated with the cold front that's going to head our way for the day tomorrow. So let's uh, take a look at temperatures across the country this evening. It is, as you would expect in July, hot in the su southern tier of states and relatively comfortable up north. We reached uh, 82 today at the Youngstown Warren Airport, pretty close to average here on July the 6th. Elsewhere across the country, as far as the uh, Precipitation goes, here's our front producing showers and storms and some severe weather. Parts of Kansas and Missouri, a couple of tornado warnings recently up in Wisconsin. And this is the front that's heading our way. Now it is going to lose some of its oomph as it heads our way tomorrow. So not expecting a ton of severe weather here tomorrow, but we'll talk about the chances here in just a second. As we go through the night tonight, just wanted to give you a quick look at the uh, short-term model here, the rapid refresh model showing you the simulated radar here in a couple of hours at 10 p.m. Again, maybe there's some light rain around, but this is gone by midnight or so at the latest. And as you get up and around tomorrow morning, here is the 8 a.m. simulated radar. Should be a quiet start to our Tuesday. But tomorrow morning, there's our front off to the north and the west. As we switch over to the NAM model here and uh, fast forward into the afternoon tomorrow, here's 1 p.m. with activity starting to get going in western Ohio tomorrow. And as we go deeper into the afternoon, this is going to start pushing east. Now there's not a ton of instability tomorrow, but there is certainly enough for showers and storms. Here's a look at the CAPE values, convective available potential energy. It's a, it's a measure of instability. Now, it tends to be a little too high here on the NAM. Notice it's showing almost 2,000 joules. I suspect that's overdone. Here's the GFS, a few hundred joules. The truth is probably somewhere in between. And if you're a real weather geek, if you know what this CAPE stuff is, yeah, 800 to 1,000 joules is moderately unstable, enough to support some stronger storms and perhaps isolated, isolated severe weather tomorrow afternoon. The Storm Prediction Center has us in the marginal risk tomorrow. Uh, so severe weather is not a slam dunk, but could you get a gusty thunderstorm? Sure. Towards the uh, middle of the late afternoon tomorrow, there's going to be some wind uh, up at 5,000 feet to pull down. Here's the wind speeds up at that level tomorrow afternoon, 30 to 40 miles per hour. You get a heavy storm, pull some of that down, could get pretty gusty for a time 
Uh, most of this will be late in the afternoon tomorrow. Again, here's 2 p.m., and then here's 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and 6 p.m., and this is when the activity is probably most likely around dinner time tomorrow. So a lot of softball games, golf uh, leagues, that sort of thing might have a little trouble uh, for our uh, Tuesday evening. As we go into Wednesday, this front is going to stall just to our south. Here's the NAM model on Wednesday. This is a tough forecast. You know, it depends on what model you look at here. The NAM model would suggest we're in the damp zone for at least part of the day with perhaps some leftover showers. I doubt there's any thunder Wednesday. But if you were to take the NAM and lock, stock, and barrel, yeah, that's a pretty damp day on Wednesday. GFS also suggests that we could be in kind of a showery zone. Some of the other modeling has the moisture kind of staying to the south. So I think Wednesday's going to be a pretty cloudy day. It's definitely going to be a cooler day. How much does it rain? Uh, showers around, I doubt any rain is heavy on Wednesday. If it rains, it'll be light, and probably your best chance of getting wet will be in the southern half of our viewing area on Wednesday. And then Thursday, not looking like a very nice day at all. Thursday is the uh, 9th, right? Yeah. Here's Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday's the 9th. Uh, here's the GFS uh, with a wave of moisture coming through parts of Ohio. Here's the NAM on... That's not what I wanted to show. Here's the NAM on Thursday showing the rain in northern Ohio. I kind of like the NAM idea here a little better because it has the support of some of the other modeling. Bottom line, Thursday could just be a damp day and a cool day with another round of rain pretty likely, I think, on Thursday. And temperatures might have a hard time getting much above 71, 72 Thursday afternoon. Thankfully, we're going to salvage Friday, though, because here's a look at Friday. Should be in pretty good shape this day with the moisture off to our south, area of high pressure off to our north, and uh, that should bode, uh, bode pretty well for some sunshine coming up on Thursday. Uh, here's a look at the pressure analysis. A little bulge of high pressure overhead for Friday. Uh, taking a look at the weekend coming up, uh, I have my days off there. Friday's the 10th. Let me make sure I have this right. Here's Friday. Yeah, I had it right. All right. And then here's the 11th. Now, the GFS on the 11th here actually has the latest version has some rain coming in on Saturday. I'm not sure if I buy that. Other models don't really have that yet, so we have a, a dry forecast for Saturday. All right, apologize for getting a little, a little confused on my dates there. As far as the longer range temperature, it's going to warm up this weekend. I think we'll get into the mid-80s, but in the longer range, we still don't have a kind of pattern that's going to produce a lot of hot weather, warm weather, seasonable weather, yes. 90 plus, just not looking real likely. Here's the 8 to 16 day outlook on the latest GFS Ensemble. This will take us from the 14th through the 22nd. And pretty familiar looking map here, although one change, the west cooling off at times over the next couple of weeks. They've been in a frying pan, of course, lately. They're going to cool off from time to time. But again, middle of the country, looking cooler than average. And around here, probably pretty close to average, maybe a little below average. And sure, there's going to be some warm days here and there. But two or three days where it's 88 or 90 in a row just doesn't seem like it's in the cards through at least the first few weeks of July. All right, I thank you for watching the uh, Monday Night Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll have another edition online tomorrow evening. Fresh radar updates throughout the course of this evening on Facebook and on Twitter. And I'll see you tonight on 21 News at 11.